Join us for palette play today as we explore color on beads, baubles, and jewels. Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels has been brought to you in part by Beading Daily, your jewelry making resource for how to projects, books, magazines, DVDs, events, and online learning. BeadingDaily.com. Beadalon, a manufacturer of flexible bead stringing wires, memory wire, artistic wire, stringing materials, innovative findings, and tools to help you fashion your own jewelry. Beadalon.com. Dreamtime Creations, an online supplier of crystals, findings, and jewelry making supplies since 1989. Dreamtimecreations.com. Halcraft, jewelry component manufacturer. Halcraft.com. Color is a powerful design tool. Think about how to kickstart your designs looking at new color combinations. Hi, I'm Katie Hacker, and today's jewelry workshop, Carrie Bogert will share a clever technique for coloring metal. You make the patina at home using surprising ingredients. Then, build a bib necklace with Molly Shaler using simple techniques with a bold color palette. Next, it's today's lesson, using crystal bicones to make beaded beads. We finish up with Elizabeth Ward and a tutorial on how organizing your stash helps you design. So let's learn about patina first. I'm here with author Carrie Bogert, and Carrie has a great idea for creating your own patina. I love this. Isn't it fun? Yes, and the secret ingredient is? Salt and vinegar potato chips. Who knew? Yeah, isn't it fun? Yeah, how do you get It's chemistry at home. Yeah, chemistry at home is a really, yeah. it's true, and biodegradable too. Yep, whatever we do today, totally easy to compost in the backyard, just go throw it in your garden. Love it. So um, I thought we'd make a fun bangle that has the potato chip patina on it. Okay. So I started just by making a um, simple copper bangle, just some pure copper. You can actually do this on copper or brass. Um, I just decided to go with copper today. Okay, and it looks like you have about 16 gauge wire. Yep, yep. I took, um, it was about five feet. I wrapped it around a mandrel and then just wrapped the ends. So easy. Yeah, and I added a little loop because we're going to add some dangles at the end. But um, to prepare the metal for the patina, you're going to want to wash it in salt water. And to do that, I just put salt in my hand. I put the bangle in my hand, turn on the running water, and kind of rub so that it gets um, kind of salted all around. Okay. So I like to use my Chinese takeout containers <laughs> for this. I've got my bowl full of chips. You literally just crush them up, get them into little pieces, and then um, you want to take some white distilled vinegar and pour it over, kind of make them soggy so that they get kind of like mushy. Okay. And then you're just going to take your bangle and kind of bury it in the chips. You don't have to worry about like every piece being covered. This is gonna be like a reaction. It's gonna kind of grow on the surface of the metals. But um, as much as you can, just kind of hide it into the chips and then put your top on it and seal it up. Okay. Um, one trick, if you are doing this like in the day and it's a bright and sunny day, stick it outside. The sealed container will kind of create a greenhouse effect. And when that metal is hot, the patina tends to develop a bit faster. How, but about, if, how long does it take? Um, I like to leave mine in overnight to get a real deep green color to the surface. Um, but a few hours, you'll start to see it forming. So it's really your own preference. Okay. So here's what it looks like after it's been in overnight. So you see the chips kind of got a little gross. Wow. Green is everywhere. And our bangles inside just covered with patina now. Cool. Isn't that neat? So you need to take a brush and kind of, if you've got chips stuck to the surface, you're gonna wanna clean it off. So um, just brush it away. Uh, 
You don't want to brush too much because then you'll start to brush away the patina. You know, this is like a faux finish, so you, you can easily can take it completely off. So it's not like it's been there for a hundred years. So okay, so you're just gentle. grooming it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, be gentle. Um, and then you're going to need to seal it. And you, it's very important that you get a sealant that is made for patina on metal. Just a regular metal sealant can kind of do ugly things to the surface. I have an example here, what happens. This was a patina, or excuse me, a, um, a sealant just for metal. I think it was more to prevent rust than to seal oh. it. So um, it kind of did a nasty thing to the surface so of my metal. So you want to be sure to yeah. look for the right sealer. Yep. And this is an example of how it looks on brass. That yeah, looks really it, pretty too. Isn't it fun? Um, so to finish off the bangle, all I did was make some head pins from copper, 20 gauge, again, just pure copper, and um, I added them to the loop. And did and you do that after you sealed the bracelet? After I sealed the bracelet. Great, well, let's take a look at some of the other samples of patinas that you've come up with. Well, they're not original, these are like tried and true, lots of different artists use these. Um, I just happen to bring them all in one place in one like reference guide in my new book. Yeah, I love it. So um, we have ammonia and salt water where the ammonia just fumes. It's not, act the metal isn't in the ammonia, just the, the vapors kind of bring out this bright blue patina. And then um, it, this is it on copper and then this is it on brass. And then if you don't have potato chips handy, maybe you're just not in the mood for chips in your house or something. <laughs> Trying to cut those out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can actually do the same thing using like sawdust. So, um, you know. Oh, so you would put it, which one is the sawdust here? The bottom one here. Oh, okay. So the sawdust um, holds the vinegar. Again, you just, in a container, sawdust, pour vinegar on, bury the metal and the sawdust kind of like wicks the vinegar down to the surface and um, creates the patina yeah, again. Yeah, you can see, so here's the potato chip one that you did and mm -hmm. here is the sawdust one that you're talking about yeah. with the vinegar. Yep. Those look great. Aren't they fun? Yeah, and then this one says salt water. Yeah, ammonia and salt water. Anytime you're prepping the metal, you're gonna prep it with some salt water. And then um, you see how this kind of has like a little speckly effect? Yes. I actually took a mister and I took salt water in a mister and spritzed it on. Clever. Um, and that kind of gives it another look too. Yeah, and now people might be wondering what you can do with all these wonderful patinas mm -hmm. that you create. So tell us a little bit about your necklace. Well, this is a, another new project that is in the book. Um, this one's called Chrysanthemum, and it's a, a 3D pendant. I cut out all the pieces, then patinaed each one, and um, gently riveted them together once wow. they had the patina it on them. Wow, it looks great. And of course, you could use the same technique on findings. You can do it on chain. Definitely, yep, yep. It, chain would work great and then you just want to, you can string it between two points and seal it easily. Um, just remember, gotta seal it. Yeah, and this is a great way to really customize it right down to mm -hmm. the bindings. Yeah. Stringing materials, chain and all. And another great thing is the patina is going to look a little different on every project, so truly one of a kind. Oh, what a great, clever idea. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And you're going to go compost this now, right? I am. Okay, we'll be right back. I'm here with Molly Shaler with Howcraft, and today we're talking about color, and this is a beautiful necklace. Thank you. Color was actually what inspired this whole design, was the color of the different beads. It's gorgeous. Thank you. You're welcome. How do you get started? Well, this one, this necklace is all about, first of all, the structure of the chain, and then um, to that we just get to add some of our favorite colors and shapes of beads. Yeah, and you chose some really interesting shapes. Yeah, this oval right here, um, it's a faceted oval, which makes it um, sparkle when it, the light hits it. Um, it's a really nice way to have just something larger, I think works well as the very bottom part of the bib necklace. Okay, yeah, and we should mention that you're kind of creating the structure of the bib. You could do this with any beads, it would just require some planning, but we'll have all the instructions on our website. Yep, it'll be there. Um, I started with, whoop, I started with these green beads, and all you need to do is, I usually create my dangles first, and then I create the foundation and the structure. So I just took the ones, and I actually usually I'll line the whole thing up before I start working it together to make sure everything looks right. So Are I make- Are you just going for longer things in the center, shorter things toward the outside? Yeah, longer in the center, and then shorter as it goes up into that kind of smiley face shape. 
Okay. So, um, so the smaller beads I chose were these um, smaller opaque green faceted beads. And then to kind of give the, an intermediate level so that we've got the, the larger beads, I actually just popped a little tiny um, faceted rondelle onto those to give them a little more length to be kind of intermediate. Yeah. So I started by making some wrapped loops at the top of each of these dangles. So um, you just take your round nose pliers, I, that's what I use to make the bend. And I do a loop back around. And then I like to actually, sorry, pull this with another set of pliers. A lot of people just use fingers, but I think either my fingers are not strong enough, but I just get a better pull and tighter loop when I use the pliers. So I made a bunch of these loops. And so I just kind of started to set them and here, after I, of course, trimmed the end, sometimes you forget to do that. So I started to put these around to see how I'd like, like things to fall. So you kind of arrange it first. Yeah, I do. I definitely arrange the entire thing first. So once I've got my dangles, I kind of see how far out I want things to go. So I started with something about like that. kind of, And also the spacing is an important thing when you're doing this one because um, there's a smaller space in between all the beads on the top layer of chain than there is on the beads on the bottom because they have to, to fan create out. The fan. Yeah. That's a great tip. Okay, so when you're ready to connect things together, do you, it looks like you're starting at the center. Yeah, I like to start at the center of my chains and I found with chain, at least for me, it's easiest for me to just double it over and find the center link. And then if there's any, um, I don't know, just if, if I accidentally have an extra link on one side or another, I can just snip it off at the end and I'm working from the center out with this design. So once I've found the center link, let me go ahead and find it here. I'll usually kind of mark it with a, with a, a head pin or something like that so that I can pull it out. Kind of mark it with a head pin there. I'll find the center link on the top chain as well. And this okay. is where the structure comes in. Um, on this design, you're going to take a head pin and you're going to go, like, do your first bead. Right. Go through that center link. And then I went through two other beads, like that. Okay, and that'll create the space between the two rows of chain. Yep. And then I go down through the center link, of the second chain. And I found instead of just doing a loop, it looks nicer and it gives a more secure connection if I do um, a, a small rondelle or um, even like a metal round would be yeah, really you nice just want there. a little spacer of some kind right there. Yeah, and then I'll make a 90 degree bend. I like to nip it off first. Oop, wrong way. And that will hold my chain, chains together. Oh. And kind of, this is a design that really does help to keep your chains extended so that you can count right, all the just, different lengths. And that you do just have to keep straightening things back out. Mm -hmm. So then you make a basic loop again. And now yep. that's your hanger yep. for the first pen drop, right? Yes, and then you can put that drop on. Okay. So, so it looks like on your next sample that you mm -hmm. have, that one is already attached. Yes. And then you build out one side at a time, is that right? I do. The w reason I did that was I, I wanted to make sure that the curve of the necklace works well. And so, and then once I find a curve on this side that I like, I can mimic it on the other side. Sure. And just kind of space it out. So I've gone ahead and I've gone through and done the same all the way up to about here, but then I wanted it to narrow at the top. So I just added one bead, or you could have even had like kind of an intermediary here where you have like a smaller bead that you pop in, but I liked having the purple continue yeah. on oh, it. Yeah, oh, it looks so pretty, and I love the way that you combine the glass with the stone. That's one of yeah. my favorite things is bringing those natural stones in to mm -hmm. your beads. They give it a little bit of texture and a little less flash in certain parts, which makes it a lot more interesting to, to look at. Oh yeah, for sure. So. Can you just show us how you would hook the pendant onto the bottom of sure. the dangle there? I would go ahead and let's see. Should I use this one or that one? Sure, maybe on the on this, this one. top one. Okay, I just went ahead and I opened the loop. I don't know if I can make it so you can see it here, but I give it a little twist so that it just barely opens, and then I slide the dangle on. So that works well because you have your basic loop and your wrap loop combo there. Yeah, it's a pretty secure thing. I think that. 
for me, the wrapped loop at the bottom, since this is a necklace, it's not going to get heavy duty, a heavy duty workout as far yeah. as pulling apart, but it gives it a nice, um, more texture and a little bit of a design element. Yeah. Right down at the you bottom. know, my other question is of where you attach the two chains together. You could open a jump ring or you could open the chain and attach it there. Thank you so much, Melly. This is a beautiful project. Let's take a look at the variations before we go. We'll be right back. In this workshop, I'll show you how to make your own beaded beads using Swarovski crystals. So take a look at the beaded bead here on the earrings. This will give you a little taste for what I'm going to show you how to do, and you won't believe how easy it is. Now you can use any size of bicone. So I have a couple here that you can see the difference between tiny little three millimeter and six millimeter. You could use smaller, you could use larger, you can use four millimeter, which would be in the middle there. Just make sure that when you choose your beading wire, the diameter will be able to pass through the beads several times. Okay, so to begin, you cut a piece of wire that's about 12 inches long. And I recommend starting with 013 or 015 wire. And you'll want to use 49 strand because it's the most flexible. So the first step is to string four of the bicones onto the wire. And you don't need to add a stopper. Just be careful when you're stringing so that they don't slide off the other end because we'll be working with both ends of the wire. So for the first stitch, you'll string the four beads onto the wire. And then what you'll do is position them with the beads in the center. Okay, then bring one up a little bit so that you can access the hole. And a tip for that is to just hold it against your finger and wrap the wire back and catch it with your other finger so that the hole is exposed. And you can pass your wire through the other end. All right, and then you pull your ends even. So just carefully hold the ends and slide the bead down using very light tension. And you'll adjust that so that it's right in the center of your wire. So you have what looks like this. Okay, so the next step is to add one bead to each side. And this will show you how the pattern is going to start developing. So add to each side and then add one again. This will be the one that we pass through the other side. So I'll catch it with my finger, pass through. All right, so you're going to do this, pull it down and see how I have two stitches there. This is also a great way to give a little practice to doing some beadwork if you've never tried it before. So you have two stitches there. Okay, so on this piece, I left it a little bit loose so that you can see here's the first stitch, here's the second one, here's the third one. Now you're going to just tighten it down and add a fourth bead. Or I'm sorry, a fourth, finish this, add another bead to finish your fourth stitch. So just adjust everything so that it's fairly even, then add one more bead and then stitch that up. Now at this point, you're just going to add another bead to each end of the wire, and then we'll be ready to stitch it up. So pass through a bead on each wire, and then I'll show you how it folds. You bring the wire ends through each side of that first bead that you stitched, and then you fold it kind of into a little tube and then you pull everything tight and you want to be gentle when you do that but you can see that it makes a bead shape and see how it forms a little star here on the side this is where you'll string it okay so I want to be sure to show you my samples but what you would do is pass this wire all the way around this part of the bead and then you just add a little bit of glue let it dry and then cut the wire ends. And we'll have the complete instructions online. Let's take a quick look at the sample so you can get some ideas for how to use beaded beads in your jewelry. You can string them onto head pins to make earrings. You can string them directly onto hoop earrings. These are just some ways that you can incorporate different colors. And it's a fun way to add a hand beaded look to your jewelry designs. I'm here with Elizabeth Ward, and Elizabeth, welcome. Thanks, Katie, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, glad to have you, and you're gonna tell us some great ways of using color in your designs. Yeah, well, 
I started off by organizing all of my beads by color. So if you take a look at the color wheel, you can see I've started with greens and blues, purples and reds, yellows, oranges over here. They look so pretty all laid out like this too. It's really inspiring me just sitting here looking at them and I can see how if you had a special attachment to your treasures here too. Absolutely. We'll bring back some good memories. And Absolutely. Jump start They're your designs. on display. Yeah. So sometimes I get stuck and I looked at the jewelry I was making and I realized a lot of it was neutral colors and browns and blacks and I thought, am I afraid to use color maybe a little bit? And so I looked um, a little bit of research and I got the color wheel and I learned about a few color combinations that are considered very harmonious. And the simplest one would be demonstrated in the blue bracelet. That's the monochromatic one. It's beautiful. And you just take different shades and tints of one hue, in this case blue, and put them together. And I think it looks really lovely. Yeah, and That's I love memory simple. wire too. Oh, Which the memory great wire is look. great. And you can get nice big stack on your arm. So easy. And then <clears throat> this one is using an analogous combination, which is three or more uh, colors together on the wheel. So in this case, I went with uh, yellow, yellow orange, and yellow green. And it was easy to find the beads. I was surprised that I even had beads in that color combination. But oh right, but then once you start looking for them, you can see them right here. Exactly. And then this one is called complementary, where you take two colors that are opposite each other on the wheel and you put them together. And for me, that felt the most daring because they're high contrasting colors. Right, and you can kind of fill in with other colors too. So you're creating more of that tertiary look where you have the ones that are opposite each other and then something in the middle. Yeah. So, and when you have everything really organized, you can just pull that together really fast. So, so yeah, the blue like with the blue orange. Blue with orange. And then if you wanted to fill in with the third shade, you would get your three color combo there. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, definitely. And you know, there are lots of ways you can find inspiration besides looking to your own stash. And I know you brought some inspiring pictures with you. Yeah, sometimes again, when I feel a little bit stuck, I thought, okay, I could look at, like I just found this picture of a beautiful bird, and I thought, okay, I could pick up the beads and try to match the colors of the bird and see if I liked that resulting image. Or I could look at a beautiful piece of artwork like Monet flower lilies or water lilies, and maybe I could pull out the colors that I see in that image to make a beautiful necklace. Yeah, and I keep an inspiration board like this in my studio, and I know probably a lot of our viewers do too, that you can pin up pictures that you think um, the colors look good together and then creating a palette based on that. And there are online generators too where you can upload a picture and it kicks out a palette. It oh, I'm gonna that. try that. <laughs> yeah. So you can just scan in an image and then it'll kick right. out the palette. Right, and then it gives you the breakdown of the colors. And when you're organized like this, it's really easy to find them in your stash. Yeah, you can quickly and easily see exactly what you want. Right, well let's bring over this board too because it looks like you have a work in progress here. Yeah, I think this one again is the analog analogous pattern and I used the <clears throat> orange and the red orange and the red and I put them together and uh, I haven't quite finished it because in my experience I come back the next day and I'm not quite happy with what I've done and I want to change it so it doesn't have the clasp on it yet but it soon will. So you'll put a lid on this put it away overnight and then come back the next day and take a look. Exactly. That's a good idea and if you want to bring in some other colors too then you could you know, look to your collection here and maybe bring in some more mid-range tones like those. Exactly, or, or if I thought maybe a graduate and maybe I wanted to put larger beads around the front of the necklace, then I could change it in that way. Yeah, and you know, um, you have a great tip too for helping people if they come up with a combination that they really love. Yeah, sometimes I give away pieces that I've made and I've forgotten to take pictures of them. So if I finish a piece and I like what I've done, I just take a few beads from the necklace, I put it on a head pin, and then I keep them on a little pin like this, and then it can inspire me to make something completely different but using the same color palette. Yeah, and you know what? When I saw you um, created that, I thought with my inspiration board, that I could create stacks of pins like that from new beads that I buy. That's a great idea. And then idea. I maybe would be inspired. Because you know, you're really inspired in the moment, and then sometimes that moment gets a little farther down the road, and then you could look to that pin and think, oh yeah, that's what I was planning to do with that. Or you could even spend a half an hour only doing that without yeah, even trying to make a piece. Right, so maybe let's say, for example, you want to create the analogous with blue, green, or blue, violet, violet, and red, violet. It's really easy to just pull it together 
and maybe put those on a pin. You now, know, what about size? That was another thing. I realized that, in my mind, for example, all purple beads were purple. But when I started looking more carefully at the color wheel, I could see the subtle differences. I could see suddenly that this purple was more blue, and that one was more red. And it made me, it gave me a new appreciation for my own bead collection. Oh, yeah. And it's, I'm sure it's especially helpful, too, when you're shopping, because you might think, oh, if I had the one that would fit right in the middle. Right. You know, you could take your swatch with you. you and know. it explained why sometimes I would try to put a purple bead with another color and it, it didn't suit, it wasn't correct, and then I started seeing, well, there are differences. It's not all blue beads are created equal. Right, that does make sense. Yeah, and you could even think about it in terms of clothes. And you know, uh -huh. looking at this right here, I'm thinking, oh, if I just change the color of my tank top, I could make a necklace right from this tray. Absolutely. You know, and I'd be ready to go. And it looks like you are wearing the perfect one for the one in front of you. <laughs> You've got your blue-green palette there. I'm thinking this is your go-to palette. Yeah, I do a lot with blue. And I also like metallics and blacks, the neutral colors. But I just felt like I was a little bit stuck in that arena. So this has made me feel a little bit freer to experiment. That's a really good idea. It's very organized, too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, very exciting. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope you'll join us again next time as our design topic is Easy Does It. Find out how to make all of your design work just a little less complicated with beads, baubles, and jewels. Instructions for today's projects, plus other ideas, techniques, and tutorials are available on the web at beadsbobblesandjewels.com. This is show 1807. If you enjoyed today's show and want to see more projects and great guests, Download individual episodes for $2.99 each or order a complete DVD set of the entire Beads, Bobbles and Jewels Series 1800 for $29.95 plus shipping and handling at BeadsBobblesAndJewels.com. Don't miss a single episode. Beads, Bobbles and Jewels has been brought to you in part by Beading Daily, your jewelry making resource for how-to projects, books, magazines, DVDs, events and online learning. BeadingDaily.com Beadalon, a manufacturer of flexible bead stringing wires, memory wire, artistic wire, stringing materials, innovative findings, and tools to help you fashion your own jewelry. Beadalon.com Dreamtime Creations, an online supplier of crystals, findings, and jewelry making supplies since 1989. Dreamtimecreations.com Halcraft, jewelry component manufacturer. Halcraft.com